So this situation was migrating a 230 terabyte database for a health insurance customer. We worked with a company called Centric Consulting, who is an Oracle Platinum partner, very skilled at database migrations and upgrades. The project was to take that 230 terabyte database, which was originally on an IBM P series running AIX 5.3, and move it to Exadata. So they needed the higher power Exadata, the better performance to handle the growth that they were experiencing both in customer base and in processing requirements. This database was not just a data warehouse, but also an operational data store and even had some development environments in it. So it was a very active database, crucial to the day-to-day -day operation of the company. So minimizing downtime was extremely important. And here we're moving this 230 terabyte database from a big Endian platform, AIX, to a little Endian platform in Exadata. The biggest constraint was the database itself, because not only was it large, I think 230 terabytes was big by any measure back in 2017, but it was also very active, generating over 25 terabytes of redo per day. And that was a limitation right off the bat, because the initial attempt to use Golden Gate it couldn't keep up because that old IBM P series was already overloaded with the day-to-day -day operations of the database. They couldn't then handle migrating another 25 terabytes of redo, capturing that with Golden Gate on that old server. The Exadata was perfectly capable of ingesting it, but the old server was not capable of capturing it. So that's why we had to go to a different technique, in this case, transportable table spaces. They also were using the original, uh, well, not quite original, but version two scripts for this RMAN cross-platform transportable with incremental backups. And those scripts back in 2017 had some limitations that had to be worked around and will give you a sense of how much more sophisticated the process is now with version four of the scripts. So first of all, originally they had single threaded file transfer. So they, could use parallel in the XTT properties, but the number of data files that would be moved were still limited. In fact, the transfer was so slow that with just one job running, it was only moving 100 megabytes per, uh, per second throughput, which is, as you can gather, just under a gigabit per second throughput. That's not nearly enough for 230 terabyte database. It was going to take nearly a month just to instantiate the level zero backups. So that was clearly a problem. And that was worked around by breaking the transfer jobs up into 40 different directories. So we took the 530 or so table spaces, and these were small file table spaces, by the way. So multiply the table spaces by a much larger number of data files, spread those across 40 directories and have 40 parallel jobs running, each with parallel two within the job. And that meant we could move 80 files at a time. And that significantly increased the throughput from 100 megabytes per second to 800 megabytes per second. So now we are able to reduce the time to instantiate that initial level zero backup from 27 days down to six days. So that's a much more acceptable period for that initial instantiation. Additional considerations. Well, in this case, this database was really exceptionally active. Not only was it generating 25 terabytes of redo per day, but there were new table space data files getting created, and in some cases, new table spaces getting created. So during that six-day window for instantiating the level backup, level zero backup, we had to take into account the fact that a new table space might appear before the end of that window. So there were cross checks in place to make sure that any new table spaces got picked up by that transfer process. So there was a lot of custom automation added here. Uh, the data pump import parameter file was optimized for the plugin steps so that it could be, uh, could have the transport data files added after the fact if new table spaces were created. And then there was a lot of load balancing done in the Exadata for the RMAN convert. So this was a half rack Exadata going across four nodes. We were able to do an RMAN convert of 230 terabytes in just over 10 hours for the initial instantiation. So here's the, the environment. We're starting with that legacy IBM P series, going to an Exadata with disaster recovery. So there was another Exadata in a different data center that was being set up as a standby. 
So that complicates it just a little bit. We're not just building the new database, but also then building the standby off of that database, which will be our disaster recovery. But that becomes very important as part of the final go live, uh, go live event. So all of this was, cre uh, was accomplished in one phase. Not only are we moving cross Endian, cross platform AIX to Linux, but going 11.203 to 12.102, moving from single instance to a rack database, moving from a file system on the P-series into ASM on the Exadata, doing it with 230 terabytes. And oh, by the way, changing from the original character set to a new character set that was a binary superset of the source. In other words, the new character set had the Euro character where the original one didn't. That's a very special case where transportable table spaces was able to go to that new character set. So was it successful? Absolutely. And this is a shot from the uh, spreadsheet that was used to track the timing of the project. And let me explain what's going on here. That yellow bar at the top, that's the initial instantiation phase where we're taking the level zero backup, moving all of those data files, 230 terabytes to the new server, running the RMAN convert on 230 terabytes, making sure that the standby is going to be in place. Then the red and blue boxes are taking and applying the incremental backups. And what you see there is that each incremental backup gets successively smaller and smaller as time goes on. So after the initial phase of instantiation, we have a couple of days of taking an incremental backup, shipping it to the target site, doing the RMAN convert, and applying it on the Exadata side. We do this a number of times till we get that backup, convert, apply window as small as possible. And at that point, then we get to that final downtime window, which was only 16 hours. Now, 16 hours may be a lot of downtime for some migrations, but when you consider all the work that's going on here, the cross-platform, going to a new version, changing character sets, single instance to rack, um, all of that going on in one migration, 16 hours was really a victory in this case. So what did we learn about this? Well, the first thing is make sure you have the latest version of the Perl scripts. You saw some of the limitations of version two. Version four eliminates all those limitations where we have more parallelism. There's a lot more automation involved. They're much more efficient. But you should still plan for the unexpected to happen. In this case, the customer was aware that they had the odd condition of perhaps creating a new table space in the middle of a migration. Does that happen in your environment? Do you know whether that happens or not? That's the kind of thing you need to be able to plan for that might be very specific to your environment. And then customize that process for your super large databases because you want that preparation phase to be as short as possible. If you have to jump through a few hoops to make that initial instantiation faster, that will be to, the, to your benefit because it will mean fewer incremental backups that take a lot less time. But overall, this is a great technique that we've been seeing at a lot of customers that have these 100 plus terabyte databases or now getting even to petabyte databases where you can minimize the downtime and get it down from days to hours or even maybe in some cases, tens of minutes.